friends! Welcome to Mrs. Hitchcock's art class again today. Today we're going to do a lesson that is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, so it might challenge you to think a little bit and use some skills. Um, I hate to say it, but it uses a little bit of math. I don't like math, you know that, but this actually does use a little bit of math. Um, you're going to need a ruler if you have a ruler. Um, if you don't have a ruler, then maybe you want to use a straight edge, like the edge of a piece of paper or a book, and just kind of eyeball it as best as you can. Um, but you really kind of need a ruler with this, or a tape measure might work. Oh, a bird just stole my pencil. Okay, yeah, this bird, Jeffy's with us again today. Um, if I don't bring him to art class, he screams for the rest of the day. So I guess he's kind of like a little toddler, and maybe I'm not doing a good job, but... Anyway, so today we're gonna learn how to draw by using a grid. If you can um, master this, uh, you can draw anything. You know, anything that you see, like a photograph or anything that you can put a grid over, you can draw. It's kind of like a little cheat sheet of um, tracing, but not really tracing because you're, you're actually drawing it. Uh, so grid drawing was devised by artists during the Renaissance as a way to draw objects, people, or landscapes uh, with the correct proportions and perspective because, you know, they were trying to use what they could. They would use a wooden frame and then they would stretch strings on the wooden frame to make a grid. Then they would put that between them and their object. They didn't have photographs back then, so they couldn't just use a photograph and draw a grid on it with a ruler. They had to make a three-dimensional grid out of the wood and the strings, place it between them and the object they wanted to draw. And then using the same proportions, this is where the math comes in, they would um, draw a grid on their paper and then copy what they see in each square of the grid. All right, so you wanna lightly draw your grids. You don't wanna use your heavy, real heavy force or else you can't erase it. Um, and you do want to erase your grid when you're done because that's not really part of the drawing. It's just a guide to help you draw. All right. So um, the packet that your teachers have sent to you, it's drawing a playing card. Now, most every house has some playing cards in them. Maybe though your folks don't want you um, drawing on their cards and I would not blame them. Um, they, they probably want to keep their cards nice so they can use them to play games with. So in the packet that I've given you, there are cards already printed out with a grid on them. This saves you a lot of time. If your card, if, if you don't have one of these packets, you can take any playing card. Um, if your parents will let you draw on it, that's fine. If not, maybe you could photocopy it and draw on it. Um, if you need this link, you can ask your teachers to send it to you. Maybe, maybe you didn't get it. So um, anyway, so here's your grid. And your grid on your card, it's every half an inch. You're going to draw a dot and make lines. So these are half inch squares. All right, now I cut one out because I've decided that I'm going to use the Queen of Hearts. You also, in your packet, should have a grid like this. If you have scissors, you can cut this out and you can set this right next to your playing card and then just kind of copy where the lines are. A couple different ways to get it done quicker. Um, so you will need a playing card or the packet, a ruler, a pencil, an eraser, um, a piece of printer paper, just your regular printer paper. Now, printer paper is normally like eight and a half by 11, but we want our paper to be eight by 10 because if we don't, then our grid's gonna be kind of skewed a little bit and it's not gonna match because you want it to match. I will show you how to cut your paper down. Super easy. A little bit of work, but super easy. Um, let's see, what else would you need? Ruler, printer paper, pencil, playing card or the packet. I'm using the packet, okay? I don't wanna ruin my playing cards. I don't wanna to have to go out and buy more either. The point is to not have to go out and buy anything. So I'm gonna move my 
change my camera around and show you the piece of paper and we are gonna work right from the piece of paper. All right. All right, so here we are with our piece of paper and ruler. Mine is clear, I don't know what kind yours is. And then my playing card. So what I'm gonna do is I want my paper to be in the same direction as my playing card. Although with this technique, you can, um, you can have your playing card any way that you want because what you're doing is you're training your eyes to see what's in each square, not necessarily the whole picture. You're just gonna be taking it square by square. All right, so my paper, we can see, you have to line your zero up on the edge. Sometimes rulers don't, you know, you, you can't really do that because now you're, you're messed up by about a quarter inch. So you wanna make sure it's on the line with the zero. And then over here where the eight is, you're gonna just make a little kind of a line right above the eight, all right? Can you all see that? And then you want to come down to the bottom of your paper, make sure you're still on the zero, and over here you're going to get to the eight. Okay? Then you're going to take your ruler, see now you have two lines that are perfectly spaced, and you can put your ruler on this line, match it up to this little dot over here, draw a line all the way through it. Okay? This is all stuff we're not going to use, that's extra. So I'm gonna put a line through it so I can remember that that's extra. Now we need to shorten our paper by 10 inches. So you make sure the zero's on the top. You come all the way down here to the 10. Put a line by the 10. Same thing over here by the edge. Make it sure it's on the zero on the top. And then down here by the 10, make, it, make a little line there. And then take your ruler, line up those two dots, your dashes, make a line across, all right? And then this is all stuff we don't need. Now we are ready for our grid. Now since, since we are using this, I gotta grab this, this little birdie. I have a wooden horse that you can move all around directions for, a, for drawing. And the bird has just now taken the ears off of it. Nice job, Jaffy. Okay, now we wanna go every two inches. Our card is a quarter inch, okay? We wanna go every two inches. So you line up for the zero, very important. Make a dash by the two. We don't have to move our ruler because we all know that after two inches, if you skip ahead two, you're gonna to get to four. Skip ahead two more, skip counting, see it's math. Skip ahead two and then the eight should be already be on the line. Now come on down to the bottom, near the bottom and make sure your zero is on the line again. You're gonna do it again, skip counting. Two, four, six, and then eight's already there. Now all you have to do is go to your line up there, move your ruler around to the bottom, go straight through. Same with the line up here. Move all the way to the bottom, straight through. Ouch. He's a little upset that I took his ears away from him. Now, um, you've got your lines going down, that's perfect. Those are your lines going down right here. So now you need your lines going across this way. So don't just, don't just grab your ruler and start making lines because you want to make sure you have the same amount of squares as your card. So the same thing's going to have to happen over here. You're going to get it on a zero up here at the top. Align it to, skip to four, skip to six, skip to eight, and then the 10 should already be there. You're going to just leave your line, your little dots right in there. Back up to the zero. That's so important. You got to have it on the zero. We have two, four, six. All right, now that you've got your lines on this side and this side, you're gonna take your ruler and blend them together. Straight line across. Now you have your grid. 
Now if you take your playing card and, and count, one, two, three, four, five. Five going down, let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, perfect, five going down. Now double check, make sure you have the same going across. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, perfect. Now we are ready to go ahead and get started. So when you're doing your grid drawing, you're gonna wanna take your eyeballs and you're gonna wanna focus really just on one square at a time. I'm going to cut a piece of paper here, or actually tear it, just so you can see what we're doing. Cover up all of this. Help your eyes relax a little bit. Cover up all of this. So now you have one square. This is what you're gonna focus on. This is a little bit of a time-consuming drawing. Okay, now up here, you notice there's a line that juts out probably about a quarter of the way or two, two thirds of the way into your card and goes down. So this is really the shape you're looking to get. So you don't wanna go all the way down. You wanna go probably about a quarter of the way down. Draw across and then straight down. Now for this, I'm not using a ruler because this is gonna be my drawing. So it doesn't have to be perfectly square, perfectly straight. This is just kind of freehand. And it's gonna actually make it look a lot nicer if you do it freehand. Now you have part of the heart in here. You don't have the whole heart, just the, the curvy part of it. And it's fairly close to the top of your card, of your line. So you're gonna go across like that and it goes, doesn't go right through the intersection. It goes right about yay far. Yep, that's a word, yay, yay far. And over here, there's another little heart real close to this line. So we're just gonna do a little heart. Hearts are hard to draw perfectly, that doesn't matter. This is a queen, so we need this Q up here in the corner. You see that? How this, cor this square looks a lot like this square. Now we're gonna move our paper over. We're gonna try to do the first, the top row first, okay? So now we're gonna move our papers over and we're gonna finish this, this line. It goes straight across, all right? And we are looking in this. Now we've got part of the queen in here, so we've got some funky lines coming up. But our heart gets to be almost finished. Not quite, we don't have the bottom of it yet because we're just focusing on this top line. Then over here, close to the edge of your line, you have a little bit of queen face. Now let's look and see how far that goes. That goes almost to the corner, not quite. So we're going to go almost to the corner, not quite. And then she's got her little hair covering. I don't think it's her hair, but it's her hair covering. That's yellow, that would be blue, and this would be red. And then she has her hair lines. Okay, so we have stayed within this square, now let me double check and make sure this square and this square look pretty similar. They do. Is my heart perfect? No, it's not, but that's okay. We're just learning. Again, this is not gonna be museum quality work. Now we've gotta move our square, our paper over. If you need to put another square down there, to cover it up so you know exactly what you're looking at. Sometimes that does help. Move away, little bird. Continue your line straight across. See, there's nothing right there, but that's still part of the face of the card. Now her hair, you can see, excuse me, my goodness. You can see her hair covering over here. I would go probably about halfway through this square halfway through this square, and it goes all the way down to the corner. So I'm gonna go halfway through this square and go all the way down to the corner. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Is it gonna always be perfect? No, it's not. This would be your red line. This would be your blue line. These look like little, little heart details. 
because she's the queen of hearts, you know. She's got to have hearts all over. He's going to ruin my pencil. Have a crayon. There you go. And then this probably is going to be her hair coming across like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and fix this side a little bit. Now that I'm doing this one, I can kind of see her eyes. Probably some of the most difficult part is going to be her eyes. Again, it does not have to be perfect. You might have a bird and a crayon rolling through your picture. And then her nose. Her mouth. Now, her whole mouth is just about on that line there. And then the edge of her face does come back up in the square. You can see that right over here. And then this looks like it could be like hair or something in there. Almost done with the first line. Now the very last line, very last square of the top line. This line still comes across the top, cuts right back down. So you just have this little area. You have a heart over here. The Q again for queen. And then her hair covering kind of comes to a little zippity doo. And there's maybe a heart on that side. So there. Now you can decide where you want to go from there. If you want to go down this way, or if you want to go down this way. Let's pick this one for now. This one is fairly easy. So now you have this square. Whoop, looks like we have a hand in there for all of you people who don't like drawing hands. This is the easy way to do it. My line goes straight down. And then right here, probably got your little heart coming through the edge there. Only draw what's in this square. And you have a flower. You notice something about the petals on the flower look like little hearts. This is the queen of hearts, you know. And a leaf. And then fingers. How many fingers does she have? One, two, three, four. Four fingers and then part of her robe. Now her fingers are just little ovals. And then part of her robe goes all the way to this. There we go. Now let's see if we can get this square as well. Ooh, now we have to finish her hand. Oh, I can't really do that or it messes up my square. Okay, so in here we wanna make sure we're continuing her hair covering, all the stripes of her hair covering. She has, her robe comes down kind of on an angle. Goes over there. And her hand, she actually does have a thumb. Hand comes down like that. This is some decoration on her robe. She's got a lot of decoration. She is a queen. If you want to fudge some of the decorations on her robe, go right ahead. Just make sure that they're consistent. There, now we're done with that square. I really just want to get her face finished and then we will time lapse to the end so you can see the whole thing. I'm not going to make you watch me do the entire squares. That would drive you insane. Okay, but I want to get her chin because it kind of bothers me that she has no chin. So see her chin is be below this line. So there's her chin. And her hair. I kind of think that this is her hair because it's just not colored in. Her hair comes around, 
her head covering continues down. And then she's got, you want to make sure that your lines here are matching up because this is her robe. And she's got some lines going this way. That's still more part of her robe. And it looks like she's got this kind of little design on the front of her robe, which makes sense since she's the queen of hearts. It's gonna, she's going to have hearts on it. All right, and she's got some more decorations on her robe over here. I'm just going to fudge those a little bit. Lastly, last row, square in this row, straight down. I like these edge pieces because there's not much to them. Straight down, then take her hair covering all the way to the edge. And then she just has some more robe designs. how easy that is pretty simple I'll continue on and finish your whole card all right now I have finished mine oh almost almost finished mine I just now see that I forgot her um, mouth the upside down part of the mouth did any of you realize that when you got to a certain point all of a sudden it was upside down who turned their paper over and did it over like that. That's not what you're supposed to do. When you're looking through a grid, it's almost like you forget what the object is you're drawing. You just draw what you see. So you just focus on the lines. So that's what I've done. Now, since that is finished, we wanna put some ink on this or um, colored pencil, a pen, a marker, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and outline mine. I'm gonna start with this. Now that my grid is there, I don't have to worry about following what's in the grid. I'm just gonna trace over my pencil lines. Again, not museum quality work, just something kind of fun. Once you learn how to get the, um, the hang of the grid, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can print out pictures of animals that you love, um, family pictures, portraits, whatever. I have done a great many drawings with using a grid. All right, this is just gonna help you to see it better. Queen of Hearts. Then you can color it in if you feel like doing it. If you feel like coloring, add some details. That's her hair over here. And remember, I just kind of budged on the design for her neck a little bit because it's just a representation. And I got my lines placed just about where they needed to be because of the grid. So if I don't have everything else perfect, that's okay. You can still tell this is the queen of hearts, can't you? So once you get it all outlined the way you want it, and 
then you would erase your pencil lines just like we no, and when you erase your pencil lines, you will also be erasing the grid. This was kind of her dividing point. And then everything on the bottom. It's just kind of like a mirror image. Which I am doing very fast because I know you don't want to watch a video that's like three hours long. That would be a bit much. Almost done. And we can be like the Renaissance artists and draw anything we want with the correct proportion. There we go. Now you can erase your lines. When you erase the grid, now when you erase, please hold your pen, your paper. Because your eraser going good and your paper's gonna crinkle. See, just like that. That's what I told you not to do. And this is pretty much how it's gonna look when it's finished there. You get all your grid lines taken care of. You want to color it in you can color it in if you don't want to color it in you don't have to color it in but now you know how to use a grid go ahead and apply it to other other areas of art see what you can come up with so there we go that's how you do a grid drawing it is a little complicated uh, you do have to do a little bit of practicing with it you can you can use it on just about any photograph that you can think of um, if you're a real uh, handy, I guess you could make try making a frame with spacing the strings apart like they did in the Renaissance era, but you definitely don't need to do that. You don't have to do that. So um, the grid works good. See what all you can do. Try something different. Try an animal or a landscape, something like that. Anyway, so now you know, now you can use the tools. Thanks for joining me today and we'll get back together again soon. Thanks. <laughs>